Hello YouTube, so today I'm going to be working on the rear diff, uh, trying to get the shims finally right, never mind I'm messing the background, I'm trying to trying to improve my recording this year, it is 2020 now, um, I know it's been a while since I posted anything, but I went back and looked through my videos and it looks like part 2 was posted like 8 months ago, and I've been doing a lot, it's not like I haven't been doing anything, but I've been fighting back and forth with the rear end, um, it's not like I've been working on it this whole fucking time, but uh, there's a lot of gaps where I haven't been working on anything or working on other stuff. But new year, new me, so I want to try to get this blazer uh, done, and this rear end here is a big holdup. Um, obviously, I think it's a bigger undertaking than what I thought it was going to be. Um, it's a lot harder. Like I think it, building that engine over there was a lot easier than what I'm doing now with this rear end. Um, it's definitely not for the lighthearted. Um, so if you th you're thinking about taking this on, uh, hopefully, I try to show my mistakes. You know, I'm I'm not a professional mechanic or anything, but I've been learning a lot along the way, and um, I show my mistakes so you know not to make them. Um, I know it's hard to judge watching videos and seeing what's what, but I'm just an average guy, so making average mistakes. Or maybe more mistakes than some people. So I've been fighting with getting back to the rear end here. I've been fighting with it. So trying to get the uh, gear tooth pattern right and the backlash where I need it. Um, I found out along the way that there's actually two different uh, types of machining done on these gear sets. And that was one of the biggest issues that was fucking me up. So there's, uh, I believe... I'll have to look back and maybe uh, add some editing corrections in this, but uh, there's face hobbed and then there's face milled, I believe. Um, the gear set that I have is the, like the newer style cut where it's a laser machine. It's more, it's a lot more accurate uh, of a cut. It's a better cut, but I believe it's called face hobbed. Might have to edit that because it might be the other one. I can't remember. It's been so long since I looked at this stuff, but uh, I do have it. Uh, figured out but depending on what type of cut you have depends on how you get the shims correct and the gear tooth pattern correct like you go about it um, in different ways because when I first started this I noticed that my gear tooth pattern was like way different looking than you know sometimes it would take up the whole damn tooth and I'm like what the fuck you know nothing that I'd seen online you know a lot of the pictures I'd seen of people doing this like what their gear tooth pattern looked like so, I, 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 at that moment, I thought maybe it's just the way mine were, mine in particular were cut. And then I started getting more into it and I realized, oh, it's a different cut. So mine are going to look completely different. It's basically since they're more cut, they're cut more accurate, the surface to surface between the teeth are uh, more flush. So you get a more like solid uh, pattern. Like it almost takes uh, all the... Uh, the compound off because it's making more surface contact because these gears are cut more accurately than the older ones where you know it only touch like a certain part instead of like the whole tooth completely meshing up so I'm gonna have to clean off this compound I actually ran out of it and I was looking up uh, substitutes because I didn't want to have to like order more and shit and deal with it but Dustin baby butt cream maximum strength is what I've seen a lot of people use it's white and uh, it's not gritty or anything, it's literally just like a paste, so um, you can always clean it off after you're done. But uh, a lot of guys use this as a substitute and it's cheaper and you can buy it at like Walmart or whatever. I'm using maximum strength because I guess it's a little thicker, so it's like even better. It's almost like, it's not like Play-Doh, but you get what I mean. So I'm going to use that. I got to uh, clean off the, the yellow compound off the gears here and then I'm going to put that Destin on there. And see where we're at. If I get this, it, like, I think I have it right. So if I put this in here and my gear tooth pattern comes out good, finally. Um, I'm probably going to check it multiple times and check my backlash. All that shit. Make sure everything's completely kosher. And then after that, uh, if that's all good, we're going to move towards final assembly. The stressful part. Um, you know, getting the pinion nut tightened uh the, another part of this puzzle that was uh, discouraging me from finishing it was not having the tool to hold the pinion while you're tightening the pinion nut because you got to hold it still because the, the whole pinion is going to turn while you're trying to torque it obviously so you have to hold 
you have to have one big ass bar holding the pinion uh, the pinion flange to keep the pinion from moving while you're tightening that nut and you got to tighten that nut to like people said between 180 to 200 foot pounds it actually there's not like a specific spec on the torque on that it's more of a range but the thing that you uh, want to focus on with that is the uh, the pinion preload so if you over tighten it and there's too much preload on that pinion you can't just back off and get it to the pinion depth because like it's a one-time use nut so you can't just like back it up you have to use a whole different nut like that nut is trash so yeah you have to keep going in little increments when you start feeling like you're getting close and then try not to go over and then once you get it right there the pinion and the uh, preload you you need and the spec then uh, you, you you're good so but I've been trying to find a tool I was gonna make one with my dad but my brother hooked me up with this bad boy and that's exactly what this tool does it's an old school tool it's very heavy and beefy but it, it's gonna do the job so pretty excited about that um, so I'm actually I got everything I need to finish this rear end now so I did record a lot of uh, footage along the way of me trying to get this gear set, uh, get the gear tooth pattern correct and everything. Probably a lot of that footage isn't going to make it into this video. Um, just because I, I know I'm, I'm trying to show my fuck ups, but I'll probably have to rewatch it and elaborate on like what happened along the way. But it's a lot of footage of me going nowhere with this, so I probably won't put it in. It's just, it'd be a big waste of time. So. All right, let's get to it. Pretty sure I had to make an adjustment on where the uh, carrier was. So I had to increase or decrease backlash and it looks like I moved the rain gear closer. And I went back and measured them. That's about what I have up there. So I think at this rate, um, I'm gonna measure what I have up here. Um, and then I'm just going to start a whole new line because I did that shit months ago. Uh, I was pretty sure that I had this right the way it is. So we're going to go with that um, and see where we'll use this as a starting point. New year. Um, basically almost like starting over, but hopefully from a very good point. Um, another thing I found out. I'd put anti-seize or some kind of lubricant on these and be very careful. Um, I almost thought I stripped one out because um, I keep taking these on and off. You obviously want to make sure these are on the right side as well um, when you take them off and put them on. I made a little mark somewhere. You can have you have these arrows that point outward, but there's a mark somewhere on here. It's hard to catch it on camera. Oh, it's right there. You can kind of see it. It matches up with the mark on the inside of the case here that you can't really see. So you don't want to mix these up. They got to go back the same orientation, same side, because it's line honed uh, down the axle here. So it's a perfect fit. So you can't just go like flipping them around and putting them on however you want. You got to pay attention to the arrows and either use a punch or something, but you got to mark which side is which so you don't get mixed up. Definitely do that because you will mix them up. So just do it. But uh, so we're gonna go ahead and put this shit in. Oh, I gotta clean this off um, first, and then we'll put this shit in, and then see where we're at. And basically just starting fresh. I guess where I left off last time. I don't know. I measured them, and it looked like it matched what I have on paper. But um, we're close. So we're just gonna run with this. Alright guys, so I'm honestly a little puzzled. I have these loose and they're not torqued down all the way. Like, see, I can spin it with my finger. And this is one thing to check when you're doing this. Before you even, like, do anything, see if this has any sort of backlash. That is not very much at all. It feels very tight already. And whenever I tightened them down, there was absolutely no backlash. And listen to this. It gets really rough in a few spots. Man. 
hear that? Like right about there, it gets a little rough. Like this isn't smooth turning back here. It is right here. Well, yeah, right there, a little rough spot. About the same spot every time. See, I don't know what the hell is going on. It's getting rough, like right around in here somewhere. I don't know why. I don't know, and I was looking at my measurements. It's about what that's a that's what I have in there right now. It's what I had written down, but it's it's too tight, like the bolts aren't even torqued down and they have like barely any backlash I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these caps back off, pop this back out and look at what the hell I got going on remeasure the shims and check out the pinion see if there's anything funny on it or something causing issues alright guys I'm really puzzled here I went <clears throat> and I remeasured uh, my carrier shims I don't think I changed the pinion depth at all um, from what I had it because I remember I was leaving that the same and I was just trying to change um, the gear two pattern and the backlash. So up here, so I have RG for ring gear side and PS for pinion side. As in the ring gear on this side, pinion on this side. That's how I do it. I don't know. So. I had them on the right side. I measure, I remeasured them, and this is actually more like 279 according to the tool that I'm using. And pinion side is more like 254. So I guess these numbers aren't exactly what I had written down. But zero backlash. So in a zero backlash situation, I, I was kind of puzzled on why it was smooth and then it was like almost like catching I checked the pinion I don't see anything on the pinion um, see here it was catching Let's see if I think about it this way looking for the uh, Taiwan markings okay so and then it would be right about like in here but I don't see anything on the teeth or anything that would cause any hang-up I checked the bearing races, make sure none of them got damaged, there's still lube on them, they spin freely. Alright guys, so I may have found an issue here with this shim pack that I was using on the uh, pinion side. So I'd written down it was about 254, well to make sure that this was actually 254, I measured like all the way around it multiple times with the tool and I kept getting a variation in thickness and thinness. It was ranging between 254 all the way up to like 258, 259. So that's like four or five thousandths change in thickness. And I was holding them together like tight. So I'm wondering if one of these shims, kind of look like I got a raise right there. If one of these shims are warped or something, looks like I might have, it's got a little bit of a raised edge. But um, I don't know, I'm, I'm wondering if these shims are a little boogered or something and it's causing inconsistency. If anything, I think it'd be this one. That one's got some raised edges there. And you gotta think in a tight shim pack, that little raise might affect something. So I'm gonna see how thick this one is and see if I have a different one. And try that out and try to get something that's more consistent. But uh, it's the only thing that makes sense to me right now. Either that or I didn't seed it uh, all the way or something. I mean, the big ones, the big ones, they're not the smoothest either. 
These are the ones that I got in my kit from Ford Performance. But, um, yeah, something funky going on here. Something I haven't ran into yet. It shouldn't, it shouldn't go around smoothly and then get caught in one spot. And then eventually, like under, whenever I had it torqued, it got completely stuck. And then I checked, I checked this other shim pack, and that's like 285, 286. There's no way I was using that. Um, or if I was, I was fucking up. And I got all these extra ones over here. That's the other stalker one that came with it. I'm going to play around with this and see if I can get uh, what I need consistently out of a shim pack instead of it varying by five thousandths. That's probably why it was doing that. All right, so if this is what I had, a seven backlash, and I, I remember thinking and reading that I had a toe to heel contact pattern, which means I needed to decrease backlash. But then the numbers I have here, it looks like I did the opposite and increase, or uh, not decrease backlash, to increase backlash to move the ring gear away from the pinion. I keep getting myself mixed up here. It's, <sighs> I digress, but I needed to move the pinion or the ring gear away from the pinion. And what I did here was move the ring gear closer. So that's why I went and I moved it quite a bit. So from seven, that's like 0.07. So if you look at four, a uh, change of uh, 4,000 thickness, and I have a 7,000 thickness change here. Or Well, actually, I should go off this one because uh, that's one I more recently did. So 4,000 thickness, three backlash change. I actually dropped it down to four, so it was already... Should have been around four, so it's already kind of tight. But since my shim pack was also... Uh, that I was... As I was measuring around, it was not consistent. Sometimes it was jumping up. And I think that's why my backlash was probably going between four to zero in some cases. And at zero, that's whenever you can't really move the carrier. And I think that shim pack I had was uh, bent or something because it wasn't consistent when I was measuring it. So not only do I need to play with the shims and get the right thickness and not use the ones that were inconsistent... I also need to move, it actually needs to be, ring gear needs to be less than 275, what I had here. So I need to move it away. And I was thinking, I could go for 8 backlash instead of 7, which would mean I need to decrease the thickness by 2,000. So I need to drop this down to 273-ish. I could do that and then try again. And then I also need to rebuild this shim pack to something more consistent. That's what I'm thinking right now. All right, guys, I've been uh, going over my shims. Um, so I was trying to cross off the fucked up ones. Obviously, this one was no good. That's the one I thought was going to be the winner. But uh, so now that I think I'm somewhere in range, I marked down what I had here. Because I think that's where, this is the point where I, d I found out that I just needed to change to add backlash to get the right gear tooth pattern. So, I wrote up here. So, from that measurement where I needed to change the backlash, I had ring gear side at 275 thousandths. On pinion side, I had two, uh, 260 thousandths. So, basically what I did here, I just took the stock one. The stock shims are a lot more uh, consistent because it's a solid piece. Like, like this, it's a solid, big, thick piece. So, you're not going to have any play, but whenever you use the shim packs, um, I mean, look at that. I'm going to clean these off before I do it. Um, if you notice here, I kind of put a range. So, because I was, 
I'm looking at these shims. I, it's really aggravating. But uh, my hands are really shaky. As you look around, it's almost like even these big boys here aren't completely flat. Um, and I think those whenever you're talking about really fine measurements like this, I think that's enough to cause some variation. Like, see, that's got a real rough edge right here on this big boy. And then I found, I threw, I chucked a few shims that looked like I had boogered. Um, I was using, shit. <sighs> I was using this punch to get them in there. But uh, I'm starting to think that's not a good idea. Um, might have boogered a few shims with that. So another mistake I've made. Um, but yeah, this is a, another shim pack. That's another thing. Keep measuring constantly because it's easy to mix this shit up. So I'm probably going to measure that again. Um, but yeah, I got 260 over here on the pinion side. And then I'm going to do about 273 over here on the ring gear side and we'll try that see if it's consistent see if it's catching or hanging any hopefully it's not <laughs> um, I actually gave it a little bit more play there's less preload on this now because uh, the gap the gap here is going to be a little, like two thousandths wider I think about two thousands so we're going to try that <sighs> and see what happens if, it, if everything looks good and the backlash feels about right we're going to check the gear tooth pattern and see where the fuck we're at all right all right guys i got the uh old detroit true track here in with the uh let's see if i can find better lighting shit got it in here it's a little tricky having the shim pack on this side to be honest it's easier when it's over here but uh to be honest, it feels like the preload's a little low. I did widen the gap a little bit by going with this shim pack. So if this is right before it's all over, I might have to add a little bit more shim somewhere on both sides to just squeeze it, the bearings a little bit more. But um, as far as backlash, I don't have the shackles on there. That sounds healthy to me. Now I'm gonna put the uh, shackles on and torque her down and that's obviously going to tighten up whenever I do that but uh we'll see where we're at I got a good feeling I don't know I don't want to get my hopes up because I've done this like probably 20 times and every time I think I'm getting there something happens so let's see how this goes all right so the lighting shitty in the garage but um I got her torqued down to 100 foot pounds per bolt still got a healthy backlash that sounds really good to be honest, let's see how free spinning it is. I'll do it from this side so you're gonna get blinded by the flashlight. Feels good. So far, feels smooth. It's something you want to do every time before you even start doing anything else. Shouldn't feel any catching or anything. You shouldn't feel, you should have some sort of backlash <laughs> by the time you torque these down. If you don't have any backlash, just undo it and restart. All right, so backlash is a little tricky, but um, basically it's all about the angle. Like it's hard to set this up. I got a magnetic one that I just clamp on there. But uh, you kind of got to go as straight as you can with the gear tooth. Um, you want it to be perpendicular as much as possible. I'm not fully perpendicular here. It's kind of hard to do that on a curved tooth. But see how it kind of slides a little bit? You don't want it to slide. You just want, you don't want the tip of the, the measurement to slide on the tooth. You want to just go... In, uh, in and out, in and out. I got a little, it's sliding a little bit here. So, but it's at the, I usually like doing it up here at the, this end. I think it's easier. Right now, see here's, now that it's settled, um, 20, 
11, so 19, 11. Oh, it's about eight. Now that it, because it, it, whenever you first tighten this and everything, the tool, it likes to settle. And then once it settles, it stops moving. Like I can visually see the needle moving as it's settling in. Um, looks like it's settled now because it's not really moving. Um, like I, honestly, this tool's not like dead on accurate like this. It's kind of impossible because there's play in the arm and everything, a lot of variables here. But um, it's good for getting a ballpark measurement. So you're eight, like 16. It's about seven and a half, eight. Since this isn't like exactly precise, what you want to do is keep measuring. So I'm going to want to spin this around and measure on the other side, measure in multiple spots, measure the same spots in different ways to start seeing something consistent. Um, if you start seeing repeating numbers all the way around the ring gear and everything, then you know what you have is probably right. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of, some people might have some really accurate tools, but, um, see that's kind of sliding on there, but, um, <clears throat> it's the way I do it. Consistency, measure a hundred times, assemble once kind of thing with this. So, all right, I'm going to keep measuring, see if I find anything crazy, uh, and then we'll check the gear tooth pattern. All right. So. It's kind of my first time using this stuff. <laughs> so for this purpose, I mean, so it's gonna be a little tricky here. Um, shouldn't need too much. That's probably too much right there. I usually do about three teeth. I don't do, I don't go around doing the whole fucking ring gear. It's kind of nutty. All right, start off with that. And then uh, I got I stole one of my daughter's paintbrushes to do this a while back. Huh. Well, now that I'm spreading it out, might need more than what I used. It's a little thin once you spread it. It's got about the same consistency as the old stuff. It actually probably has better consistency for this. As far as I can tell right now, just spreading it. You want it to be pasty, but you want it to be able to um, be like kind of like Play-Doh or clay where you make impressions on it. All right, fuck it. Good enough for me. Let's try to spin this thing and see what we get. Usually when I do this, <clears throat> um, you want to apply pressure to it so it leaves a good marking. But uh, I spin it the pinion, my hand. I'll go this way first. But you want to create some drag on it with your other hand. You gotta be careful because these gears are kind of sharp some places some guys just like to rock it and go back and forth but I like to go all the way around because I feel like when you rock it you're just the tooth is pulling off of it and then it's putting it right back on so it's not <clears throat> actually generating a good impression oh wow all right Probably go around about four or five times. Oh man. Oh. Oh my goodness. So far so good. I'm kind of excited guys. I've been working on this so fucking long. I've been trying to slow down on my drinking but if I get this tonight, I will probably have a beer. I'm not gonna lie. It's Sunday. I think the liquor store is still open. 
Holy shit. Are you shitting me? Oh my goodness. All right, going the other way now. Come on, baby. I don't want to look at it yet. I don't want to look at it. Don't want to look. Oh my god. I accidentally looked. I couldn't help myself. Holy shit, boys. Holy shit. Alright, so we're seeing about the same thing. A little bit more up on the toe, on the drive side. Um, but for the most part, a straight pattern across the tooth. Uh, looks pretty centered. Um, and then on the coast side, still a little bit more up on the uh, heel, but pretty much a straight pattern across. For the most part, I don't know. I know it's not perfect, but uh, I think I'm willing to run it. It looks centered on the tooth, and it's pretty damn close. Like, I feel like the center here, it's marking about, like, right here. So, saying this is the center of the tooth right here, I feel like it's just slightly off over here. And the coast side... Is more like over here so if you look looks like the uh, coast side is a little like here's the center of the tooth the coast side like just a hair over here which I don't think is bad <clears throat> I know that you want it dead center of that tooth but I've been fighting this thing so much that I'm about to say I think that's close enough to run Seven and a half, eight backlash two, which I think is good. I think I'm gonna run her. I uh, sent some pictures over to my brother, see what he thinks of this pattern. He's built rear diffs in the past, like several of them, so. See what he thinks, but I think we got a winner. I don't know, I've said this before, thought I had a winner, and then turns out I didn't, but uh, I really like the way that looks. All right, guys, so I was doing some uh, thinking here and doing a little bit of research and asking around, but uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, I kind of asked on the online forum, and they're like, yeah, I'd run it. It's kind of what I'm thinking, too, like it'd be all right. Um, a lot of people are saying that, like, on these Ford Performance gears, um, They've seen people with like shitty ass patterns and they're not noisy or anything, but my, when I was looking at the chart that I was using before that seemed to have been working as intended, like whenever I made a change that it said to make, it, it was correct on what happened to the pattern. Uh, it, it was saying if I still have a toe heel uh, contact pattern, which I do have, I think for some reason I was thinking that I had to <laughs> decrease my uh, or increase my backlash to get it to not do the toe heel. See, this is the problem with uh, starting something and then start uh, stopping for a few months and then trying to pick it back up, trying to remember what the hell you were thinking a few months ago um, compared to now. But uh, I did notice, I went back and looked at some pictures, and I saw the pictures of this guy right here, because uh, I smartly took this right up next to the uh, pattern I had and took a picture so it showed exactly, so I knew that the one in the picture was this one. And if you look, this is very close well, other than the pinion depth, that 29, and I moved it away one, and that toe heel, it's basically almost the same shimming that I had here. The only difference was the pinion depth. Um, 
went down one and the toe heel lessened. So my theory right now is if I wanted to really get this spot on, I think I should try these same ones right here. I know my backlash is gonna jump up, but change pinion depth to 27. Uh, 27 and uh, go from there. Uh, I think at 27, it might be centered. Uh, the stock ones were 26. So going one up to the ones on the original gear set that came out of it. So if I go up to 27 from that, it'd be the midpoint between what I have now and what it was stock. So <clears throat> I think we're going to go ahead and uh, mark this one. I'll take a picture next to this one so I remember what... Because I've taken pictures of every time, but I didn't match up what I wrote down to the gear pattern. So I don't fully know what all of them are which. Alright guys, so after doing some thinking here... Oh, never mind the mess. I'm thinking uh, I'm going to go ahead and try this... Uh, the pinion shim at 27 thousandths and see what that pattern looks like. I like what this looks like, but I feel like we can get a little bit better. And I'm gonna go ahead and try this. Probably have to adjust these shims, but that's probably gonna be the biggest thing is trying to keep track of these shims because I do kind of want to save this one. So I'll have to like mark them or something, figure something out. But um, I kind of feel like I need a little bit more backlash too which increasing the, or decreasing the pinion shim by one will add more in itself. So I may not have to change these, which would be nice. But uh, basically from what I'm thinking and reading is that by decreasing the pinion shim, it's gonna uh, get closer. From what I heard, it's more important to have the it's more important on a fresh gear set to worry about the drive side so i think i can get that drive side a little bit more centered by decreasing pinion down to 27 which i've tried before but that i think that was back before i knew what the hell i was doing fully like i do now i feel like i know now so we're gonna go tear this apart and try that one Sorry the water softener is running, but uh, I don't know if I've shown this in a clip, but this is how I get the pinion flange off. I got the nut loose in here. Um, I'm really trying to not booger the threads or anything on the pinion, so I do it this way. Kind of got a uh, um, driver set uh, cup there on the nut. And then this is a, basically a bearing separator puller. That's a bearing separator right there. I just kind of put on the back there and then I put this puller on there and I just wrap it. Um, I have been kind of heavily using <laughs> the end of this so I'm kind of worried about getting a socket on there. I think I was using this 5 8 one. Okay. I had to, oh shit, you get the idea. Well, guys, I had to improvise uh, that tool I was talking about that I've been using to try to be easy on the threads because uh, I boogered the stock ones, so I was trying to not hammer on it. <laughs> so there's some shit down this nut. Um, I think it's just wood. But, yeah, when I first took this apart, hold on. all right. Threads are still good. But uh, when I first took this thing apart, after I yanked out of the junkyard, I just took a hammer and hammered on the uh, the end right here and it uh, made it out around. So don't do that. Um, <clears throat> basically what I did was I had the nut on there partially threaded and then I took that wood block right there, as you can see where I was hitting on it, and I kind of put it over the flange and I just pounded on it with this mallet, or brass mallet there. Uh, I had my hand up underneath here to catch the pinion, but that worked pretty good. So 
I don't like hammering on this shit. I was trying to avoid that. That's why I was doing it the other way. I mean, it's in there tight, but you honestly probably don't need a puller, but you better be careful when you're hammering on it. And you obviously don't want your penny to just drop out. So here's my setup bearing. I kind of want to put this on a clean spot here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and measure these that I'm pulling off right now. That's what I had on there. I believe it was 28, but like I said, you want to keep constantly measuring when you're doing this. If not, you're, you're going to hate yourself and keep track and write everything down. But I'm going to measure this compared to the stack I had. That's 27, pretty spot on the nose. So I think this is, this should be 28. So we'll check and see, make any adjustments if it's actually more like 26 or more like 27 already, 27 and a half, then I may aim for 26 and see what happens, so, all right. All right guys, so just what I was kind of half expecting, these are the ones I just pulled off, it's actually like 27, I measured all the way around several times. So if this is 27, then I guess I'm gonna aim for 26, which is actually what the fuck was on there, uh, which would mean I could probably just put the stock ones on there. The only problem with the stock ones is that, uh, here I'll show you guys, that I don't like, is that they don't fit on the pinion as snugly. So here's one of the stock ones, see how, uh, I guess it's got a wider opening in the inner part of it than the other ones. So if you look, let's see here if I do this, see what I mean? So they actually don't fit on there as snugly, which I don't like, but um, looks like I might be going for 26 or maybe even 25. I don't know, because I know I've tried 26 before. That's That was a starting spot, but like I said, you know, I probably didn't adjust the, have the backlash right or didn't read it right, because I don't know what I know now, so. I don't know, part of me wants to just try 25 and see what the hell it is. If that's already 27, um, I was just wanting to go down one, but kind of thinking, let's just overshoot it and go another one, go 25. So I'm gonna try 25, 26 was what was in there. And I heard on these gears, originally I heard it was like 28 to 30 thousandths usually on the pinion. But uh, after doing a little bit more digging, it's usually 24 to 28. So maybe I should try 25 and see what happens. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's do 25. All right, guys. So I made a uh, correction there because that was actually 27,000. So I was running, not 28. Like I said, I don't know what the fuck I was doing before. Um, so you keep measuring because with this, you got so many different measurements and stuff. So it's good to constantly measure before you do anything. Just like keep double checking, triple checking, whatever. <clears throat> And it almost seems like every time you measure something, you get a different measurement. I don't know. <clears throat> Probably use their air. But uh, I found a stack mixed with uh, one of the ones that came off, one of the old ones that came off originally and one of the new ones. And I got uh, 25 thousandths. So, and I measured it like five, six times all the way around. I kept getting 25 thousandths. So, uh, we're not going to change these. Uh, just yet we're gonna try this see what the backlash is it might jump up to like 12 or something might be a little loose 12 to 13 uh, by keeping this because if you think moving the pinion away so that's creating more distance between the pinion and the ring gear so your backlash is going to go up when you change your uh, pinion shim or your pinion depth or whatever so I'm increasing the pinion depth I'm moving it away from the ring gear by going with the thinner shim, which is what I was saying if you got a toe heel situation. Now, if I do this and I get the opposite, a heel toe instead of a toe heel, then I know I went too far and that I should try to go for 26. So that's the game plan. Let's uh, go ahead and get this back together I already got the shims on there um, but yeah I've done this probably about 20 30 times somewhere I've done it way too much 
and um, I'm hoping you know my video will save somebody a lot of time uh, going through the mistakes that I have and trying to figure this out. The biggest thing was this damn tool. You definitely want a good one of these. Why does this keep turning on? But uh, this is a Mac Tools dial caliper that I got from my brother. I was originally using like a little plastic, don't use the plastic ones, a little plastic wooden like $15 one from Lowe's uh, was very inaccurate um, and I would practice measuring, I'm going to try to be consistent as possible, there is a lot of variables so, but alright I'm going to quit blabbing, uh, get, back, get this back together and see what the backlash is like and I'll show you guys and we'll keep going from there. All right, guys, I got the pinion in. I uh, did it a little different this time. I had it like this with my arm up under there. Um, you got to hold on to the pinion while you're torquing this down. I like to use a towel or something because those gears are very sharp. So they will slice you the fuck open. I've done that when I first started doing this. So I do that. I took the impact, wrapped it down until there was no more play. Obviously that preload is way too light, but uh, I, I will get it, I'll wrap it a few more times until I feel it start getting snug and then kind of go from there checking the preload on it. So every time you do this, I put the, uh, you should use the oil slinger and everything. I don't use the seal because obviously taking that on and off is not realistic and it doesn't affect um, the pinion in, in and out, the pinion depth, so the main thing is the crush sleeve. I re, I've been reusing the crush sleeve that came with it. Um, we'll find out in final assembly if that really affects anything, but I don't think it will as long as the preload is set in spec in, a, in the same range. Because the more preload you have, which means this is tighter, which means it will pull on it. So as long as I aim for about the same preload, the uh, pinion depth should stay the same whether it be the old crush sleeve or the new, so. Uh, so now I'm gonna wrap this a few more times, get the preload tighter. The range is 16 to 28. I've been getting about the middle, around 22-ish, 20, 22. Seems like a good range, but this is like probably zero, like no resistance. Shouldn't slide that easy, like you should have to have, have to grab onto it and turn it. You should feel a decent amount of resistance. So, all right, guys, she's back in nice and smooth. I already cleaned all the teeth off and everything. The Destin is a little easier to clean off. I don't have to use brake clean on it, it just literally wipes off. So, that's cool. Um, main thing when you're putting this in there, make sure your shims are fully seated. Um, kind of use that wood block again and tap very gently. You got to be. I mean, sometimes you gotta use some force right now. I probably don't have enough preload or squeeze, so I probably need to, once I get it, I'm gonna have to add shim to both sides to get the right squeeze on this, uh, to get the carrier bearing preload right. Cause I can, I basically set it right here, juggle the bearings and, or the races and the shims, and I kinda like gently roll it into position I usually get caught up on this side for some reason I think it's just the way the housing's made um, actually I think it has a gap or something but you want to try to have a beveled kind of sort of a beveled edge on the shim on the outer side it makes it easier to go in because it won't get caught on the housing but I always have trouble over here for some reason um, it is also where my shim pack is this one's a solid stock shim so but anyways, I got this in there. That sounds really healthy right there. That, that sounds like a really good backlash. That's probably like a 10 or 11. I don't know, we're gonna check that. We're gonna check the backlash real quick. Um, also, after I torque, you gotta torque these down. If you don't torque them all the way, it does affect the backlash and how the gears are seated. So, like I said, this whole thing, if you wanna do it right, be consistent and do uh, do it like you're building it for the final time every single time um, I'm probably gonna try to get some new cap bolts after uh, before I do final assembly because um, I feel like I've torqued these bolts a lot they've been abused 
Um, but, all right, we're gonna check the backlash and check the gear pattern. All right, guys, so, um, like I said before, try to get it as perpendicular to the curvature of the tooth as you can. I found that doing one of these uh, finger numbers under here, lining it up, doesn't really matter where at. I've seen guys do it on the bolts here. It's just you wanna straight in and out on uh, as much as you can, because you, you can see it kind of slides a little bit on the tooth and it'll affect the measurement a little bit, but you don't want it sliding a lot up and down on a curved surface because it's going to affect the uh, measurement. But it's uh, still settling a little bit. I mean, this thing isn't the tightest tool ever, so but it it's doing the job. So there's 30, 37, 29. There's 28, fucking 46, 30, and there's 25-ish. Yeah, I'm thinking it's about a nine. 24, yeah. So my backlash is at nine. I'm pretty sure I've done it multiple times. It kind of threw me for a loop there for a second. I was doing something different. So we got a nine backlash. It's got a nice clickety click. Nine is within spec, completely fine. It's actually on the tighter side. I think it's eight to 13 on this, but I kind of wanted to run a little tighter on a fresh set of gears anyways, after it wears in, it's probably gonna loosen up a little bit. Uh, so I'm pretty comfortable with the nine. I think it's a good safe zone. So, and that's a nice clicky sound there. All right, let's uh, get some goopity goop on there and look at the gear pattern. All right, guys. So I was thinking to myself, maybe this desk and stuff is just peeling off a little too easy because I feel like it was, uh, it was. But uh, I managed to scrounge up a little. I added some water to that dried up compound that's been sitting on my bench for a minute kind of scrape some out of there and mark these three teeth here but it definitely paints a better picture um still a fuller contact pattern i like that there's a gap at the top um there's a gap a little bit of gap right there so it's not completely off the tooth on the heel or on the toe um still more towards the toe on the driver's side and then on the uh or drive side coast side um, see if I can get my shit to focus. Uh, yeah, it's still up on the heel, but still a good solid contact there. Still a gap at the top, gap on each side. I feel like I could possibly try 24, to be honest. But, uh, I just realized when I did that I t turned the camera, but, uh, yeah. So... Really like that. I kind of like that better. I might just run with this. Uh, a lot of guys were saying on a fresh gear set they kind of want it more towards the um, toe on the drive side anyways. It's not perfectly centered, but it's pretty damn close. I like it. I think I might just run with that. Try not to overthink it and just say fuck it. Put her together. But uh, I'm going to make sure this is what I want to do and uh, if it's if that's the case, then we'll move towards final assembly. All right, guys. So I, uh, I think I've decided I'm going to run this. Fuck it. It's very close. I mean, I really like the way that looks. I did uh, both the Dustin and this. I feel like the compounds still work better. The Dustin pulled off like way too easy. It was harder to see the pattern because it was just not as sticky as this stuff. But um, yeah, I like that. And plus, you got to think once it wears in, it will gradually move up the tooth a little bit. And the backlash will decrease a little bit. So being at nine a little tight is definitely fine. Um, the only thing is on the final assembly when I do that in the next video, because I'm pretty sure I have enough footage for this, um, I'm going to have to add some preload to... Uh, Yep, my brother just texted me. <laughs> he said, shipper. <laughs> so, 
he likes it too. Uh, talked to a few people that I know that didn't really know what they're doing with this shit, and they all agree it's definitely good. So, uh, I do notice that it's way too easy. Well, it's not like super easy. It's still really nice and tight putting this carrier in, but it shouldn't be as easy to pop out with the pry bar as it is. So I think I need to add a little shim on both sides equally. So I keep the same backlash and everything, but I put more preload on the carrier bearings. I don't want to put too much. It's not going to take much. Probably only need to add like five thousandths to each side. We'll get to that on final assembly. But uh, I think today I might even, I'm going to tear this apart and uh, I got a, all the new stuff over here. This is going to be a little nerve wracking whenever I go to this, but uh, got brand new bearing. That I'm not using that setup bearing, obviously. I grounded out the inside of it, so I had to buy another one, same exact one. I already verified that this is the same exact one as it, that's on there. I got my new seal, new crush sleeve, new nut. If I fuck up, I might have to get another one of these because I think that's my only other one. Uh, got some black RTV ready to go, but um, I think I might try to get this pinion in here, it's the hardest part. Uh, I'm kind of running out of time today, but we'll see what happens. I can at least get it tore back apart and get it ready uh, for final assembly. But that will be in the next video. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, I'll probably do a final conclusion, uh, final uh, takeaway, I guess, on this whole thing. Uh, that'll really uh, summarize everything, and hopefully it'll help people trying to do this for the first time like me. Um, so you can learn from my mistakes and... Yeah, but all right, see you in the next one.